technical solutions. Um, it's part of what you guys have to bring bring into this today, right? Yeah. Your, uh, it's the, uh, it's technology that aligns with the plasma of the being and the crystal and the plasma of the minerals and the earth, and it's all sort of aligned. We're just we're just sort of walking the path and remembering and joining rejoining with our family to manifest it. For all of us. Also, the blueprints for the, uh, yeah. the, the things that you have. Special thanks to Good Doc work. and his cooperation yesterday. We have some visual, visual show and tell. You can pass those around if you want. Those are the blueprints to the free energy. Uh, uh, instead of a generator, it's more of an accumulator. And uh, we've been asked and tasked with the opportunity an honor to begin the reconciliation process among tribal nations and bring this information. We're just we're working on getting something built so that we can take it and show how we built it and how it can be built. And that's one of the beginning stages of the process. So I think archiving it would be appropriate. So you're um, building a free energy machine? It's already built. We got just got to all the Where patents and everything oh. just got delivered to humanity on Saturday last week. So, so you, you built it's already built. Where is it? No, no, we, we haven't built it. We haven't built it yet. Somebody built it. Yeah, oh yeah. Yes. It's been, it's been Where is it? <laughs> um they were in Belgium. They've moved yeah. to Italy now. Yeah, gee, I wish it was at hand or you could build one of the actually. Yeah. Well it's all yeah. it's all in the process. That's what we're More doing. More great That's minds what we're walking in. Let's let's see it. There's a couple on Facebook, and there's a couple on Facebook. Right, this is Kristen. Yeah, Go ahead and introduce yourself. Tristan. Tristan, I mean. Tristan. Tristan the Tall. Tristan the Tall. Yeah. We're going to be heading outside later. We probably have more seating out there as it cools down, and uh, we're going to have a, a presentation. And we have Roderick, Dave. Roderick. Goes light, he carries water. Yep, he goes light. I like that. Come on in and find a, a place to sit. We're gonna we're gonna transfer outside here in a minute. Yeah, we we uh, <laughs> that's what we're working on right now. Put together and building it. Um, we have the blueprints and the patents available to us right now to put it actually put it together. Except for I just don't happen to be an engineer or like a, a scientist who so kind of need the help of somebody that has that mindset to help us gather the right parts necessary to do it without you know blowing our hand off. Or sure would be great to have such a thing. There's talk of many oh, yeah. examples what's, what's of many going on here? Uh, of energy production. There's actually a few different devices in the uh, paperwork there. Right. Does it tap into orgone energy or the energy of ether or electromagnetism and light? Yeah, I, what it, does it the plasma, the plasma, the plasma, plasma. that hold, and the plasma that okay. the universe holds. So it's kind of like the the machine that is on the movie Thrive. Uh, yeah, it's a lot like it's a lot, it's a lot, a lot like the, the, it We all have the same field. That's right. how the butterfly. Yeah. Well, and that's the great. You know, as soon as we can see one operating, that'd be course. wonderful. Of course. Yeah, it, it works with the gravitation and the magnetic field. Right on. Of the Earth, and, then and ultimately, so that's the only place to go. Megrav technology, is right? Because it's everywhere, and it's yeah. unlimited. and it's unlimited. Yeah, and, and it's free. The, <laughs> the application, most importantly, the applications are, are countless. Uh, <laughs> anything from instant clean water to replicating certain uh, matter particles to uh, eliminating propulsion technology to where it just works with the mag. Just basically how you see UFO flies. Or UFOs fly that you see with the same type of stuff. Okay. Travel space and all that stuff. Is, it's been made available uh, to us. It might seem a little too good to believe, but I mean, it is a fact. We're working with the uh, PR slash media lady yeah, of Cash the Scientist. So, I mean, we're, we have it now. It's just we're just looking for some help to Do actually have a assemble website it. Or something? I don't know. What'd you say? Do you have a website or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cash Technology Guide. Cash Foundation. Cash Foundation, yeah. Cash Foundation, yeah. All right, there's Susan. We can begin. Yay. There's Javier. We're ready. Okay, we can have more seating in the backyard if it's not too hot outside. Does it still feel too hot outside to you guys? Do you have more chairs? Like these well, there's there's more chairs outside, but there's going to be there's going to be a presentation that requires that we're outside. You want to do? Okay. Just get some chairs and pull them in. There's some chairs, and then we can sit around. Dave Croto lives here, and he's on his way. Yeah. Oh. He's on his way. Okay. Well, I brought some, some hummus There's and table stuff. back there. Oh, just okay. put it the table. Or you can put it show. here or whatever. Okay. Actually. I am recording, so everybody here is aware. All right.
right? So if we get gems, we get gems. No, it, essentially, yeah, just, you know, for uh, release purposes. It's This is a documentary. It's not for any profit. In fact, it's quite for the opposite, uh, other than profit for humanity. So um, I'm just letting everybody know that this may go on public television, YouTube, nationwide, um, international, because um, that's how uh, I'm connected right now. Okay, so just just to let you know, <laughs> this is an auspicious day. So here we go. Here we go. Give us an overview of what you see solutions. And speak up, please, if you can. Solutions. Um, well, you know, the big thing about the big thing about solutions are the fact that you need to know what their solutions to in the first, you know. And so I think we, what we need to do is get real honest about where we are and how we got here, um, because. But well, we do want to just talk about solutions, not where we, how well, we got here. Just solutions to what? The space being. Solutions to the air, water, soil, community, yeah. people living in peace together. Well, then that we have to go back to see how we got out of those in the first place. What happened to the original communities? that whole concept of who we are as living creatures on a living planet that works through networks of mutual support. And so the solution to community is rebuilding those relationships. Networks of mutual support. And that's how we can start moving some of these things forward. But we also then have to be real honest about all the things in current culture that don't work that way. Because one of the things I think we have to realize is the fact that one, as a species on a living planet, and we have to be aware of the fact that we share 85% of our DNA with a banana. We were not dropped here by space beings or anything else. We evolved on this planet. We belong to this planet. As Alan Watts says, you, know, you did not come into this world. You came out of it like a wave from the ocean. You were not a stranger here. And so dominant culture, though, based on enlightenment thinking, actually based on hierarchy domination, these force-based ranking hierarchies of domination that occurred in the late Paleolithic to early Neolithic era, that got us away from that aspect of acting the way life works. And so as we start talking about solutions, the first thing we have to realize is that there is a functional model of sustainability. There's a functional model of mutual support and reciprocity, and it's the natural world. In nature. Healthy ecosystems. That's the way they evolved. In fact, that's the way life on Earth, from early chemical bonds up to, you know, original um, bacterial life forms up to what we have today, all follow the same things. So let's apply that to, and make solutions. Like we don't really need history. We need to know what we're going to do now to change what's going on that we all know about. Well, at what scale? At what scale? At what Local scale? and global. Yeah. What we can do locally, right here in that's, our lives together. I'd like to that's, see that's the thing about regionally and globally. Yeah. Uh, see, good, that, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's we the agree. thing about looking at relationships that work, that scale. Because since they're based on the same underlying principles, we can apply those in and looking at the things we have that the things that we're doing wrong. And when we look at what how we've gotten to where we are, and I call it the triumvirate of collapse, which is peak oil and global warming and corporatism. And all the things that arise from there, you know, the loss of topsoil, the loss of fisheries, the loss of global forests, the loss of community, and all these other things, they come from that same underlying root cause of disconnection. And so if disconnection is really the root cause of everything we're up against, then reconnection is, is, the, solution. is the actual solution. And How do we do start, that? Then you can start taking applied eco-psychology and looking at quite well, literally at all those various reconnecting activities um, people can go through. So reconnection is basically <laughs> where you're at. <laughs> How does that apply to like water? It applies to water because looking at the bonds we share with the living world and with each other, hey, Jack, good to see you. These things come about as part of our overall life support system. 
And so one of the first things we have to be aware of is we're looking at the fact that we're using too much water, we're using too many resources, we're polluting our sandbox, we're basically destroying our life support system, is what it's going to take to get back in balance with the living planet. And this is where sustainability, and especially using a legally defensible and ecologically sound definition of sustainability, we can start seeing how far outside of the carrying capacity of the planet we are. And so, you know, one of the problems with, you know, one of the solutions to water, as well as the solution to all other resource depletion, is getting our global population down to where it's within so, ecosystem uh, carrying capacity. Me, yeah, I came late and I didn't know the format of this meeting with Joshua J. And uh, I, I, if someone could help me, fill me in, is there a facilitator? Is there a gender? I'm going to claim facilitation. And it's about solutions. We're supposed to be focusing on solutions, and we asked Dave to speak first because that's how this meeting came about. Do we share time, or does he take 10 minutes and then the rest of us get 10 minutes? Well, hopefully, we could all take time talking about our solutions and not the past. Or Do we have a talking drink. stick that goes around so we all get a fair turn? Well, let's, let's, um, let's maybe bounce from one thing to the other. Let's start with Dave as a stimulation, as a platform to the rest because everybody has things that are. Well, I know, but it seems like there's only two or three people talking. Right now, dialogue. Dave's talking. Well, hopefully, only one of us is going to be talking at a time. Otherwise, yeah. it's going right to be now, real unclear. Talking. But how, how, what's the timing for each talk? I think we're kind of we're kind of open. They should conclude on their own, and people should be aware of many people wanting to talk. Right, and there's like a room full of people. If they all take two minutes, we've got an hour. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it would be, I mean, for my benefit, I want to get a chance to say what I think my solution is, and maybe there are a lot of people here that want to share their solution, not necessarily fitting in. The you bring up a good right. point. That's so, a good point. Brief, you want to do like a minute? Everybody speak their solution a minute? Yeah, why don't you have a go around and people can speak briefly, and then we can have time to like elaborate. Mm -hmm. right. And Dave is setting the stage of how oh, we're beginning. Okay, a minute, a minute, introduce yourself and give your solution. Everybody agree to that? Everybody want to do that? Pass if you don't want to do it. That's fine. Okay. All right, Dave, finish giving us the basis to this. And speak up when you, when you talk to us. You know, the basis is, like I said, you have to be able to analyze whether how the likelihood of success based on what we know about life in general, the way it works on this planet. And so the core solution is reconnecting with nature and relocalizing our lives and lifestyles in our communities. Rebuilding of those intimate bonds that we have, that we share with each other with the natural world. In order to do that, part of the solution step in is creating coalitions that can work together to create the critical mass to bring that about. But all this stuff is based very firm, from my perspective, is based very much on what we know from science today, especially system science, looking at the leading edge in you know, evolutionary biology and quantum mechanics and on and on and on. <coughs> All these things work together and applied in a framework that works the same way nature works in creating sustainability and creating networks of mutual support. Then we can have that ability to start looking at the things we're trying to do as to how much sense they make within this system that we find ourselves in, within, as I said, as living species on a living planet. How these things work together, so how we can take the relocalization and reconnecting apply it to the building of coalitions to create that critical mass, to get the change and seeing that not only does it have a scientific foundation, but it also is totally congruent with ancient indigenous wisdom from Earth-centered peoples. And so all of that works together then to present that, but it has to have that framework. Because without the framework, without a foundation, you can come up with any old silly thing and claim it's going to work. But if you start looking at the assumptions behind that, that's when you have to be really careful because what we're talking about is systemic change at a global level that works also at the local level. Very good. And so if we're going to... Oh, you had your minute. Um, <laughs> oh, Josh, come on, buddy. We didn't ask oh, you to thank you. We didn't ask you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, come on, buddy. Hold, Excuse me. Hold and, and we'll ask you to time keep when we're ready. Finish, Dave. But the idea of what you're, what you're building here well, the idea is clear. Is to present a framework and then be able to analyze other solutions within that framework as to whether or not they actually support life. Do they actually make sense for life on this planet? All right. And so I'll wrap it up right there and then can kind of bounce around back and okay. forth and looking at other solutions as to whether or not they fit within a framework 
at least a framework that works for what we know about life on this particular right. you know, blue dot in the universe. So maybe right now we'll find a framework for all these solutions offered. I can keep time with the, I have a timer right here. All right, so. so you can keep time for the one minute. All right, so, so who who would like to go first? You want to just go around? Yes. Susan, do you want to, we can pass and come back. I'll pass for now. Okay. okay. Uh, I like what Dave said. I like your perspective being global. Um, I come from a different perspective and you may not like it. Uh, Number one, I, I first learned about overpopulation when I was a kid, when I was just 12. My father was a scientist at NASA, and he was going around saying, the planet's overpopulated. The planet's way overpopulated. We're going to have problems in my lifetime. You're going to have problems. You know, he's talking to me and my brother growing up. You're going to have problems, and we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, I followed a scientific way through life, but I've also gotten involved with uh, this group of people in Switzerland who have been in contact, or say they've been in contact with people from another planet. And uh, they have they have a rather different perspective on environmental stuff, uh, but it's also very global. Uh, and so they bring more things to the table. The primary among them, the planet's way overpopulated. And if we don't address that, then all of our other problems are are not going to be addressable. Okay. Thank you. Next. I prefer to pass. Okay. All right. So in, in keeping with this whole thing, I think solutions are in terms of us getting together, recognizing we're sharing kind of one being, and the nicest words we can hear are, I agree, rather than debate the issues. And I think we're, we're poised on the edge of putting this all together as kind of Dave sets the platform and describes unity of consciousness, and then a common vision, and then we proceed in collaborations and we build a critical mass that Dave said, and then boy, we are one big powerful force. That's how I see solution coming. That's all the time I need. Okay. My name is Newtopia, and I feel we need a new architectural design. I'm looking at the idea of ecology, which is the fusion of architecture and ecology. Starting from scratch, uh, get rid of, rid of the automobiles, use solar power, and you need a very uh, much of a coalition of intelligent people in order to make this work. So I see us uh, some, some kind of infiltration of the university system to bring all those minds into building this new archetype in architecture using 21st century technologies. Please give your name uh, you want me to use on the, uh, on the editing. So, I'm Ken. Uh, I don't think we need a framework. I think old style organizing will not bring about effective change. Uh, and we can't even begin to anticipate what will. What we have to do is work on an individual level be as clear and purposeful as possible and explore, ask ourselves, what, how can I make a contribution to constructive change? Uh, solu that's the solution, not, not to uh, um, group together in a way that uh, um, you become a target and, and can be discredited. Uh, technology is here to stay. We need to use technology in order to um, explore those questions, inform ourselves, prepare ourselves, and find an opportunity in which I, as an individual, can act. Yeah. Dan Reese. <clears throat> uh, don't have much to say, just uh, working on free energy is the biggest thing to me that would have the most effect. I'm Kim Marie Teeter, and I'm going to second what Doc is saying. I think free energy is a game changer, and I think that it's also correlate with the free energy that we possess inside that we're remembering that we have, and we can unroll that and unfold that as we learn how to do that reunification and amplification at the same time. So I'm really excited to be here in an ocean of solution keepers. 
Javier Lopez, uh, my greatest concern is the damage we're, we're doing to this planet. And uh, I think we should be working towards nurturing nature and bringing it to a position where we can better sustain ourselves and be ecologically minded. And uh, solutions, there's, there's plenty of solutions. We just have to devote ourselves to making the right decisions and making the right concerning uh, you know, our, our basic needs, air, water, food, shelter. That's all. Thank you. <clears throat> Jack McDaniel, um, two, two things, consciousness. Um, we, don't, we don't do anything except we think it's right. Our present system situation is based on, on separateness. The, the systemic change that could occur, whether it be aliens or democracy, slowest thing in the world, democracy, mm -hmm. maybe aliens are quick, um, is the, the understanding it's all connected, that everything, every thought, every, every action is connected. And, and the second thing is, is action. Um, I would love to see a hundred people with shovels digging a hole, a hundred people doing something physically so that there's ownership of that project and uh, people go by and go, I help that. And, and more people who do that, it actually creates a physical thing to, to move from. Thank you. Dave? Is that? Um, no, go on to the next one. Okay. <laughs> Uh, ready? Yeah. Hi, I'm Joshua J. And uh, what I want to look at is the overview. We have a room full of very a lot of people, ideas, and also uh, a lot of energy. And also, everyone can't work with every nature. It's what our personalities are like. I propose that we, as a group, having like mindedness, create a social element. Sort of like the Kasba, except that it's ours. We we uh, make dues, we hang out there, and then we schmooze with each other, finding the people that we can work with on the projects we want to work with. Because this Eurocentric conversation, therapy, therapy uh, discussion will lead to just arguments and who's, whose solution is the best. But if we had a schmoozing place, coffee, tea, waffles, whatever, we can hang out, then I could find Doctor's Utopia, talk about something, find my friends. And so I think that we need to start small, like crawling instead of walking and running. And if we had a place to hang, we can then interact one-on-one -on -one with each other. I think I went over a minute. That's all right. Yeah, I thought I was over a minute. So thanks. <laughs> uh, my name is Kyle Glenn, and I'm going to third the free energy to, uh, a conversation over here. Um, and I love that this is a solution oriented talk here because that's what we've brought. We brought solutions, and that's all we're focused on right now is solutions. We're, I don't know if you guys heard of an Iranian scientist called M.T. Kesh, but he's currently, uh, he, he is a nuclear physicist, and he's uh, currently. Uh, uh, founded this uh, brand new technology that we're working with his PR, uh, his unofficial PR lady to help gift to the people. And uh, he is, as of last Saturday, he has gifted all his blueprints that, he's, that he gave to governments around the world about, uh, I think about two, two or three years ago. And it's been suppressed. Uh, they suppressed it from, from us, the people getting information. And not to mention, this technology has been around for 100 years since Nikola Tesla was alive. It's been suppressed, and it's ours. And w it's not even a question at the point where it's not a question of it's real. It is real. And then, I mean, you guys can do the due diligence and research to find it out. But it's, we have the blueprints. Can you help us build it? And that's what we're here today is to try to assemble it in any way possible. Hi, I'm Allison. I'm Dave's wife. So you may hear a little echoing of, of what he said. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I can only look and see that you know the the Earth has been in sustainable balance for billions of years. We're part of it, and it just seems to me it makes sense that the more we think and act the way the rest of the natural world acts, 
the more sustainable, healthy, fulfilled we'll be. I think that, you know, everybody in here, I love it that we represent part of the diversity that makes a healthy, you know, ecosystem. And that just the fact that we're here together in the same, I would say that um, the spirit of solutions. So we do have a commonality, even though it's expressed differently. And for me, even though I cannot abide by it, rightness, like if, are we on the right track, is asking ourselves the question, does it sustain life? And if the answer is yes, then we're on the right track back to sustainability. Uh, my name is Lee Stanley, and uh, I'm thinking quite often that it's it's really too late, but uh, we got to make this last real, real effort. And I think we don't have time to like form our common bonds of friendship to work together. I think we got to reach across the table, as they say, and work with your enemies and work with those you've never been able to work before, work with before. Because I think we're high past time to get it done. So, uh, I'm I'm Dave Croto, and uh, been a pleasure to know Dave Ewalt for a number of years, and have uh, gone to school on sustainability. And I think our, our our number one issue here in Tucson is water, and sustainability has to do with living in our care in our bio region within the caring capacity. So the solution for me is looking at the Tucson Valley and its most precious thing is its water. And how do we sustain the population that's here with the water we know that exists? The water's taken thousands of years. It's an ancient aquifer. It's dropped 300 feet in the last 80 years since we've been dependent upon fossil fuels. So our benchmark is that, that line underneath us where the water drops. If it continues to drop, we're failing. If we stabilize it, we're on the right track. So the future has to do with getting Tucson in a carrying capacity for the population that lives here within the, the, the limitations of our water. Good. Hi, my name is Bruce Scheer, and when I think about solutions, I think about giving people the tools and the wherewithal to make solutions that are pertinent to the moment, pertinent to the place, and rather than the details of what we all should do, talk about the qualities that good solutions have that uh, we want to make sure that people include. So when I think of a, a framework, I think of a qualitative framework that a good solution has this and it has that. And so the when people craft solutions, they have the list of ingredients that they know is supposed to be in there. And, um, and let people kind of work that out. Um, so that's my idea. Anybody here that passed interested in? <coughs> um, okay, I'll say something. Um, I feel like there's not one easy solution. I think there will have to be a lot of different solutions. Um, my feeling tends to be that from an individual perspective, trying to change the way I live and do things, um, of course mindfulness and especially preserving our water is important in this area. Um, about carrying capacity, like Dave was mentioning, we probably are overpopulated right here in the Tucson Valley for our water source right there. So, And as time goes on with climate change, many people will move away. And um, To what degree we can try to free ourselves from our dependency on fossil fuels, that will be very helpful, I believe, as a solution. Uh, driving our cars less, using alternative means of transportation more, um, trying to cut down on energy use, um, wastefulness, just all of the things that have been kind of the American way of life need to change. Anyone else? That didn't? Dave? Yeah. Robert, I'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm uh, David John Marin, and uh, oh, wait a minute. I'm the timer. <laughs> <laughs> I got to correct it. There we go. Okay. Uh, I think everybody here had great things to say. I'm really glad that we have it all captured on, on video. 
And I think somebody's going to have to go through and uh, maybe make some very important note or make notes of the important points and maybe put together a report or something on that uh, for this meeting. Uh, individual responsibility is really key and important. Water in the Tucson Basin is very important. I agree with that. I like the idea of having a forum, uh, a, a place where, where we can where get together and talk uh, again, whether that be partially at least online or maybe in, in homes like this. Or other venues, um, uh, free energy really important. Um, so, I uh, I just I just well I want to thank everybody for coming here and putting your ideas out. And again, it's important that we've got it all captured. So, okay, thank you. Matter? Oh, I'll, I'll say something short. Where I feel like the most important thing that we can do is come together as a community and be in a space where we can agree to disagree at the very least. That's the biggest thing for me. So everyone can voice their opinion, express themselves in a way that they feel like they need to or being compelled to do, and other people accepting them for what they have to say. And I guess the biggest thing on top of that is having somebody keeping a whiteboard. It seems like a really cool idea and somebody that is perceptive and uh, has attention to detail, writing these words or these something or others down, keywords, that then we can come back as, as a collective and, and discuss um, and, and give those important things each due time. Thank you. Okay, I'll take a turn. Let me hold the for All right. We... Yeah, it's already on. It's all in much of finger there. We are already in the midst of the solutions. As uh, Abraham Hicks says, all we need to do is make the withdrawal from escrow right now. As far as a place where we can meet, there is a place um, on 19th Street and 4th Avenue called the Alliance for Global Justice Hall. It used to be the Stardust Lounge. And there are non-governmental uh, organizations already collaborating. Occupy Tucson, uh, Alliance for Global Justice. Peace Center. Uh, Peace Center. So that's there. And we can make that a place where we can literally begin building all of these things. It's, it's an enclosed ballroom, so there's plenty of space. The most important thing as far as in my walk that I've seen as far as what we need for solutions is access to resources. Because we can talk about all the solutions all day long, but if we don't have the materials, the resources, it doesn't matter how many people are waiting in line wanting to build the, the spaceship, you're not going to have a spaceship. So what I'd like to share with everybody is a, a man's name by, oh, has it been a minute already? Okay. Share the name. His name is Jacques Fresco, 98 years old, and he's had... He's had the solutions since 1974, so I urge everyone here to spend some time looking into the Venus Project, please. The Venus Project. Yes, and that's my solution. Okay, so maybe we can all come to an agreement of what we should